the Wednesday Week is sponsored by the Riverside Cafe, new outside bar now open on match days. Ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to the Wednesday Week, the Sheffield Wednesday podcast. I'm Lord Hillsborough, and with me online, first of all, we have Mr. Marriott. He's back. How there, James, your boy? Hello. Happy New Year. And you, old Bean, uh, you were missing last week. Had you um, overdone it on the festivities there, old Bean? I, I wish that was the truth. Unfortunately, I had this horrible sickness and whatnot bug that's yeah, been yeah, yeah, yeah. going around. Is that I could, I could tell you a story also? about me sat on the toilet while simultaneously oh, using no, the bath, no, no, but no. I don't think it's suitable oh. for a family audience. <laughs> and Mr. Davies is there. Davy, uh, Davy, da- well, that's your new name, Davy. Oh boy, how the are you? <laughs> Happy New Year as well, uh, my lord. Yes, I'm. I'm not bad. I'm. Uh, I'm totally recovered now from the videos that Vic uh, splashed all over the uh, social media. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it's fine. Thank you in my house on New Year's Eve. But, oh, hey, I poor you, ladies and gentlemen. Please, 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 if you haven't seen the, the uh, videos of uh, of Rich doing his wonderful New Year's Eve dancing, go and seek them out. They are amazing. <laughs> You can't teach that kind of dancing, no. <laughs> but one scene cannot also be unseen as well. <laughs> and uh, Fuji, how the hell are you all been? Yeah, I'm all right. Can you hear me all right? Can everybody uh, Can everybody get me? Can you all understand what I'm saying? Uh, I don't, I don't know if hear you're aware. Well, well, yeah, I mean, well, you know. struggle most of the time, to be fair, Fudge. <laughs> well, this is because I am a local celebrity. I don't know if I uh, told any of you guys, but I, uh, I met a fan in Southampton the other day. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your I was in. Fan. Yeah, my my one fan. Actually, it's really weird because he knows a couple of people that I know from about six different walks of life. It's really odd. But I need to say hello to Pat Sissons. How's it going? You all right? Um, nice to meet you. Is that, is you're that... getting recognised and stuff. Well, what it was, it really threw me out why he'd recognise me. I was like, oh my god, is is my voice that distinctively shite that, that he's managed to pick up on it with me screaming at the telly? Because uh, I'll not lie, I'd had a couple of swills at this point, and. Um, I was sculling them by thinking, yeah, bah, I'm great. Yeah. Then I was watching the NFL and watching the uh, Dolphins get spanked by the Patriots, going, bah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then a geezer came up and he went, are you, uh, are you fudge off the podcast? I went, oh, Jesus, this is this is mental. Sometimes they're just fanning my face, going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, we, got, we had a really good chat. And, you know, we kind of knew a lot of the same people. And... Um, and I was, and, and as he walked away, I was suddenly thinking, Christ, that's really weird. That I've, you know, I've got recognised almost essentially an audio medium. You know what I mean? I thought there aren't that I don't put that many photos on my wrinkly face on, on online. And then it dawned on me that uh, for Christmas, <laughs> Christmas I got given a Miami Dolphin shirt with my name written on the back. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> so it kind of, kind of gave me away a bit there. That's, that's probably what it was. <laughs> but, <yeah>. and, and <laughs> That, that card that's been following you for the last six months now, he, 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 he's, he's yeah. <laughs> and it looked at the coach and said, hello, Dan. <laughs> but no, brilliant. And, and, and again, a happy new year to everybody. Um, and it has been a, an interesting start to the year, hasn't it? Well, uh, well, for a start, actually, an interesting end to the year uh, when we popped off to Preston for a very... <laughs> What's the word I'm looking for, chaps? Um, a rumpf. Harumph, a very it, harumph affair. It was a Newcastle come down. That's what it was. <laughs> Too much Nuki Brown consumed by uh, by the boys, which is fair <laughs> enough. And um, they're just really struggling. It wears you down that stuff, doesn't it, Newcastle Brown? It really wears you down. Um, it takes a few days to get out of the system, it, doesn't it? It, do- it doesn't pass as quickly as you'd like it to. It's a bit like Guinness in that respect. <laughs> So, um, yeah, that's that's what happened. So that's uh, Preston covered. That's Preston out of the way. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> a couple of things I would just like to mention about Preston, if you don't mind. Uh, first of all, um, obviously, it wasn't the best is against, but it was a clean sheet, and um, praise has to be uh, pushed it, it, forward to I'm Mr. Sorry, West. It, it wasn't a clean sheet. We, it no, was it wasn't a, a clean it, sheet, no. It was a it one-all was. draw. Uh, and that's actually scored two disallowed goals. goals. Necessitate us conceding a goal at some point, yeah. <laughs> I apologise. It was a one-all draw. It was a long time ago now, wasn't it? It's always through it. Uh, but, but Westy did make a, a cracking double save on that as well. I, I didn't think the defence played OK. Um, but apart from that, it was a pretty dull affair until, again, the, what, 93rd minute, there or thereabouts, when ping-pong ensued, didn't it? 
It was a hell of a finish as well, wasn't it? I mean, that was... Uh, what, I think the, the official description is pussing his laces through it, isn't it? Because he had no idea where that ball was going. That was just hit it as hard as you can and hurt for the best. Um, and it, it sailed into the back of the net. Yeah, all right. So, um, uh, overall, it was, a, it, it was a fairly poor performance. Preston deserved to win that game. Um, they, um, they had a couple of goals disallowed. There were a couple of good saves by Westwood. Um, and... We up, up at the, the back end of the stand kind of said to each other that, you know, if, if they score in the next 10 minutes, the only thing you can say is, well, it's been coming. And they did, and it was, you know, it, it, it was on the cards, them, them scoring. Um, and I think, you know, overall, it was a success to get a point out of it because we didn't really deserve it. Um, and sometimes you need that, don't you, where you, you, you don't play brilliantly and a little bit of something goes in your in your favour. And obviously it was, it was written in the stars for McGeady to score a wonder goal but it comes back off the post. Somehow it ends up going to safety. Um, and as it turns out, we, we snatch um, a, a late equaliser. Um, in terms of trying to give some kind of analysis from the game, it's really difficult because it just, it was one of those where it didn't work. The formation didn't work. The game plan didn't work. W whatever the game plan was, um, it, it, it just wasn't, it wasn't there. So I can't really offer you much in terms of uh, picking exactly what went wrong. Two things I'd point out. The movement was really, really poor. There was very little movement, particularly in midfield, and it did make me realise how much we miss Kieran Lee when he doesn't play because he does make some serious movement across that pitch. He does, you know, he's, he's a box-to-box -box midfielder, isn't he, really? And, and, and he does, you know, he seriously puts in some miles. Uh, and when he's not there, we really miss that. The other thing is that you, you can't, I mean, why on earth you'd want to, I don't know, but you can't play Fletcher and Newey together. It doesn't work. Two big men up front. <laughs> Just does not work. Um, it, it, I mean, in his defence, I thought that New Year was probably unlucky to be the one that got taken off at half time because I think he probably offered slightly more in the first half than um, Fletcher did. But I think you know Fletcher is is more of a th threat generally speaking, um, and and that's about it really. That's about the best that I can offer you. No, and I think it's just about covered with all. That. And again, it, it was a while ago now, and, and obviously we've we've been trying to get together to get this podcast done and out of the way. But after all that Preston excitement, and of course the Wednesday fans were still super upbeat, weren't they, boys and girls? We had no moaning at all from any Wednesday fans. Uh, then came the visit. Well, <laughs> well, I don't know. The guy behind me were right moaning. Blood Blood rubbish. Sword. Bloody rubbish. <laughs> we're all bloody rubbish. Oh, it was it was a meltdown, wasn't it? I think it, it was like Twitter forgot that we'd taken 10 points out of 12. <laughs> you know what I mean? Was it actually, that, that was, was there a meltdown? Because I, I just stayed off Twitter. I noticed afterwards. you were When we don't win, I just, yeah, but, I just avoid it. But yeah, I, it was just nuts, man. I do exactly the same. Whenever, you know, whenever we, we've, we've not had a great performance, I avoid... Um, I shouldn't be saying this. I run a social media business. I I, I avoid social media, <laughs> but I just I, I avoid the Wednesday-based stuff, so I, yeah. I can just live in uh, ignorant bliss. I, I agree. There's two scenarios where I avoid social media. One, when Wednesday don't win, and two, when Atty New Year plays. So when both those things happen on the same day, <laughs> I'm I'm sorry, but my it's airplane mode all day long. <laughs> I um I must admit though, on the on the back of that game, you you. you there does, there does have to be, and, and I, I, I'm playing devil's advocate to an extent, but there does have to be some question marks raised over Addy Newhue's quality of whether no, he doesn't. can fit into that squad. No, there doesn't. Not at all. Not I, um, the they, they've been, I, I, they've I, been I there say, for a while, haven't they? This is not a new yeah. thing. No, I, 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 I'm aware. Don't, don't, don't get me wrong. I, I saw an interaction, I think it was you, Lord H, uh, with somebody about how much... Um, Space he makes for other players to get in. How much? Uh, how many? You know, involvements in assists he gets and that sort of stuff. And I and, and I agree with you on that. I agree with you. I, I would like somebody to do the math and work out. You know, how many goals he's been involved in. But but, um, <laughs> but yeah. But I just think that um, I, it doesn't. I, I've got two main issues with with Wednesday at the minute. And and bear in mind, I'm still chuffed with the, with the haul over December. Don't get me wrong. But. Um, the, the, the main issues are New Hugh, I don't know what he brings to the team given the way we play now. I think back when we first had him and we were bludgeoning our way through the, the bottom end of the championship and, and bludgeoning our way through some games last season, I think he was a very useful tool. However, we've signed <laughs> we've signed <laughs> players that are that are supposed to be explosive and lively and move. And he he doesn't play like that. I mean, Reach. 
can cover the, you know, one end of the ground to the other thousands and thousands of times. You know, uh, Fletcher is a handful. But, uh, you know, my other point then comes with that is what do these new signings bring to us? That we don't seem to have kicked on any. We don't seem to have moved forward any. Would you, would you agree? Or, or do you think we're a lot better than where we were last year? Well, I think one of the reasons that those chaps have got the space to move about in is because of Dave. Um, and again, I know I'm probably going to get pelters on Twitter, and I don't give a chuff, if I'm honest. Uh, I, I, we said it on the podcast recording. Um, when Sammy scored his goal uh, from the corner, the reason he had that space to score that goal is because there was two players marking Dave. He, he needs two players to mark him against the corner. And quite simply, if one of those players had have been on Hutch, then he wouldn't have got his shot off, he wouldn't have scored. Simple as that. I, I- I, I think we've we've come past Dave, if I'm honest. Uh, and it's much when you you early talks about about Ben Marshall, and I, I think we're past those kind of players. Were great for us at at one point. Knew you, Ben Marshall, knew he's on loan. Now I, I think we're looking at players at a better level than that now. And I think perhaps at the moment all the players that were on form last year, Bannon, Forestieri, uh, are not hitting those same heights this season. So I think it's a bit of that, because you've seen the teams now become a bit more to what it was last season, uh, apart from maybe up front where Hooper's injured. And I think we're missing Hooper, but I just think they're not all hitting the form that they were last year. And I think that's, regardless of the new signings, um, it's, it's, it's just not clicking, I don't think, all round. See, this is what I don't get. Wednesday fans, chuffing morning all over the place. We're laying sixth in the championship, yeah. and we haven't hit our stride yet. Now, it is January, though, isn't it? Yeah, this but... is, yeah. This is this is our issue, though. Why haven't we hit our stride yet? How long do we need? We don't want to do it the last week in April when it's too little, too late. But and, we had and all this like... morning last season. We had all this finished... morning last season, and then we had a belting, belting into the season, and we're bust into the playoffs. Now we're already in the playoffs, not playing particularly well. Yeah. Mm. So when but... we do hit our stride, what's going to happen yes. next? But we when? were we were well into our stride by November last year. We we were winning games. We were playing great football by November last season because we. And yet we're higher now. But yeah, but yeah. Should we have still, more points. Should we come back, still be comparing ourselves to last season? Should we just be going on today rather than the past? But isn't well, that I, I isn't think that's so. nature, isn't it? It's a good point. Oh, and, yeah, it is. But... And, and, and the big thing that's changed, in my opinion, in the last few games is obviously Hutch back in the middle, where he should have been from the start of the season. When we had the Leeds discussion um, a long, long time ago when, Leeds came, uh, when we played Leeds, and we got bullied off the park by Leeds, the big, nasty, brutish, filthy so-and-sos, if Hutch had been in the middle at that point of the season, it wouldn't have happened. That's what we, we had this discussion. We had um, Chris Holt on the podcast from the start, and we spoke about that we're missing grit and we're missing somebody to uh, in the middle. And now Hutch is uh, in, in the middle again. It's that's sorted that issue out. Now we just need the fronts to start firing. I agree with you. It has sorted that issue out, but have we lost a little creativity? Having somebody kicking 10 bells of shit out of somebody in a DMC <laughs> role. Have we got have we got the right players in front of him, spreading the balls and moving around a bit? Because Bannon doesn't seem to be firing on onto the no, level that, that he's capable of, and he can play that role. Uh, but whereas, uh, you know, people who play football manager, for example, will know the difference between a, an AMC, an MC, and a DMC. So you know, you've got you DMC. Yeah, no, I can run DMC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've yeah. got. A, You've got a DMC in Hutchinson and you've got uh, an MC in Lee. There is nobody bridging that gap between the um, between the front and the midfield. You know, the the, the role that the Spanish call the Trecaista, I believe. Ooh. The Messi role. You know what I mean? Ooh. Now, we um, dictionary. No, I'm quite the European. You, sh- you should be aware <laughs> of this, chaps, now. You know what I mean? <laughs> but... Um, but, we, you know, are we, are we losing something going forward by going, i tell you what, Sam, you just sit here and kick 10 bells of shit out of somebody. Let the, let, you know, let the centre bikes have a bloody holiday. Make them look better than what they actually are. You know yeah, what I mean? At the, at the risk of sounding like, and I'm going to coin this phrase, and I hope it catches on, not a happy clapper, completely opposite, a teddy chucker. If I sound, <laughs> you know, I'm not trying to be a teddy chucker. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to offer up different, you know, different thought processes. But there is something clearly not going right in the attack. And we are missing Hooper because of, because of what an intelligent player he is. And I don't believe that Lucas Joao and I don't believe that Ati Newhu are the answer no. for when, when Hooper's out. And I'm not going to mention his bloody name, but I don't think we need him either. I'll be in next week, Jordan. 
Let's <laughs> we'll come to that nonsense later. Um, I mean, looking at, obviously with what Fudge mentioned there with with Bannon. I mean, against Wolves, Bannon put the the the, the free kick in that, that that Sasso so 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 close came to scoring with. Um, against Preston, uh, it was Bannon's run into the box that created that havoc um, for Reach to eventually score. So I do think that those players are making those opportunities and 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 we've all said it a thousand times we're not taking the chances that we're creating so is it the front few that's, that's causing that problem um james just said it right now lee is a massive massive loss to us it really really is the the the, the work he puts in is incredible and that's what we're missing and that's why a lot of the football i think is looking a little bit less Entertaining, shall we say? But we, because, but we didn't have Lee. But we didn't have Lee for the Newcastle game, and we were outstanding that day. We well, were very, that's... very good. I thought we, we good. yeah, I, I thought what we did, we did what was needed to be done to beat a team that's at the top of this league, and uh, and that's what happened. However, you know, we we, we can't sit here and say uh, we should always now go with that game because you need to put round pegs in round holes. You have to have a team to play the team that you're playing. For example, you have to have a a decent squad rotation. If you need a, a Leeds United midfielder, put Sammy Hutchinson in. But if, you, if you're going to take on teams like Preston and Wolves, we're going to need some players with a lot more creativity to, you know, to, to grind out a result because they're going to come at us because at the risk of sounding like a Sheffield United fan, this is their cup final. Mm. No, no, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but I think... And, and again, I'm going to go the complete opposite to, to the Teddy Chucker. I'm going to be my full-scale, lovely, happy clapper that I always am. I don't think we're in a bad position. I really don't think we're in a bad position. Yes, the football's not been brilliant to what we used to, shall we say. We used to that exciting football. And, and it is dis- and I've been disappointed. Um, but I'm not going to start moaning while we're laying in the playoffs, not playing brilliantly. If we can not play brilliantly and stick at this position at the moment, brilliant, fantastic. The the, the, the level of a, a good team is is picking up points when they're not playing well. And at the moment, we're not playing well, apart from certain players. Looking at the Wolves game, I thought Sasso played very, very well. Uh, he obviously had that, that header. He, he cleared a shot off the line as well. Mm. And, and it was been a little bit of a nuisance up front. <laughs> mm. now, I, 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 is that on the line? Either James has got a special toy on the go or he's disagreeing with I f- me. I feel like I'm making a mar- You know the noise that Marge Simpson makes when Herbert starts <laughs> doing something? Hmm. Do you disagree, Jamesy? Okay. Vincent Sasso does some things well. Every time the ball goes near him, a bit of poo comes out. <laughs> All right? I can't lie about that because he makes me nervous. I'm not convinced that he's actually a footballer. Um, and it, you know, it does do some stuff pretty well. But every, it, it just, he looks, it, it just doesn't look right. He, he, he looks like he's going to mess everything up every time he, he does it. And, and he didn't against Wolves, to be fair to him. But he just fills me with dread. He really does. Um, and that's maybe unfair, but I can't hide the fact that that's how I feel. He, he, it's a bit like, and I love the guy, but it's a bit like when Liera used to play for us. Sorry, Yera. Um, Yera. And, Yera. and it was exactly the Yera. same. The ball went near him and you, you kind of go... You'd kind of worry, you'd panic, because he's just, he always had a mistake in him, and that's how I feel about Sasso. Every time he plays, I think, all right, he got away with that one, he got away with that one, but I'm waiting for him to make the mistake. Yeah, do you think he's working a little bit too hard on his uh, Keith Lemon dress? Because he clearly has got his little <laughs> wrist thing going off there as well. I'm waiting for the tash to have been. <laughs> uh, of course, Hutch, um, again, against Wolves, I thought he was brilliant. He, he, that, I mean, we've, we've put that little video out of the, the wonderful tackle that he got <laughs> yellow carded for. Jeez. Could have possibly been a little bit more. Tackle. <laughs> how, how was that only a yellow card? Uh, wow. Wow. <laughs> It, it was committed, wasn't it? I think that's the, the, the way to put that. Um, and it did, did take a, a wonderful free kick to the face as well, didn't he? Uh, which, <laughs> I'll tell which... you what, that, that tackle, though, that, that kid, that Ronan, I think his name was, um, and, and he, he was apparently a, one of Wolves' uh, academy players, and uh, he had a fantastic game. And an Hutch proper did him, and you know that that, that worked for us, you know, because he was he was tearing us apart down that right inside that left hand side to, at one point. Well, um, he didn't so, do much tearing after that one, did he? He didn't. No, he went off <laughs> into it. Yeah, funny that. 
<laughs> and of course, he does have to be say uh, uh, said Westwood again. There was a, 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 a amazing couple of saves on Westwood. One particularly one on one with the keeper. Westwood pulled off a brilliant, brilliant save, jumped back up, and was screaming at the defence. He was furious that um, he'd mm-hmm. been let through to, to to have the shot in the first place. Absolutely fuming he was, uh, which was nice to see. Really, really was. Again, as Fudge mentioned last week, showing the passion and, and just how audio he is with his, his defenders and really giving them a lot for. And fair play to him for it. But, again, it was a clean sheet. That one was a clean sheet. I've got it written down on a piece of yeah, paper. You, you can have uh, <laughs> I, I think I think for me, over the two games, Preston and uh, and Wolves, I think I said last week on the podcast, they were they were games we should be winning. Uh, and, and, you know, I mean, we should be getting six, but I'd win me happy at four. We just got two. And... I can't, that's how I break it down now. I think we've all been breaking it down. We get so many points over so many games. And break it down into, into Christmas, we, we got five points, which it doesn't sound horrendous, but we, we should we should be getting, or should we get, I would have preferred seven points over the, the Christmas game rather than just the, the five, you know. It's maybe, maybe being a bit greedy, maybe. But. Yeah, I, if, you, if you look over sort of December, if you like, obviously we, we won Preston at our place uh, 2-1. They played Redden, obviously we lost at Redden uh, 2-1. Of course, there was a Barnsley win, the Rotherham win, the Newcastle win, and again, the draw at Preston, which is it's not a bad December. That. And let's face it, to put it into context, we're unbeaten this year, which is brilliant. <laughs> I, I've I've sort of been viewing it as, for me, the Christmas kind of period of games sort of started with the the Barnsley game at home. So I've been kind of thinking about it as that that block of of five games, where we've ultimately we've taken eleven points from 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 fifteen. And as I've thought about it, I've thought right that block of five games kind of summed up our season it's kind of been like a mini season in itself because within those five games we had one really good performance we had two pretty average performances and then we've had two below average performances and yet out the back of it 15 uh, sorry 11 points from 15 which is not bad we started off the, those those five games i think we were one point clear in sixth place we're now two points clear in sixth place so you could say that that's a little bit better we've conceded one goal conceded one goal in five games uh but we've only scored five goals we're only averaging Ooh. one goal per game so it's as topsy-turvy as it can be for, for, yeah, for yeah. five games but ultimately the stats don't lie 11 points from 15 if you continue doing that all season you will finish in you'll, you'll finish yeah. in the top in the top six yet it doesn't feel like any point during that five games we've actually got into any rhythm any kind of momentum and it's basically it's just like our season summed up in a in a period of five football games none of it makes sense there's no there's no there's no rhythm there there's no pattern there there's no logic as to why we can play so well at Newcastle and then go to Preston um, and and it kind of all unravels and then we play Wolves which again we expect to be an, e- an easy win and we come away thinking we got away with one there we actually stole a point from 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 Wolves at, at our place um, y- you look then at the next five games that we've that we've got um, and we've got, so what, we've got, let's forget about Middlesbrough because no one gives a shit. So we've got uh, Brighton away, then we've got, uh, sorry, we've got Huddersfield at home, Brighton away, then we've got, uh, what, Bristol City away, uh, Brentford at home, and we've got Wigan away. And I don't think they're in that order, but basically we've got home games against Huddersfield and um, Brentford, and we've got away games at Brighton, Bristol City, and... Wigan. If we were to take 11 points from, from 15 from those five games, I think we'd all be pretty happy again, wouldn't we? We'd all think, well, that's been quite successful. I think we'd expect to take six points from the two home games, ultimately, because they're home games. We'd probably expect to go to Wigan and, and win. And then if we can go to Brighton and take a point, and we can go to Bristol City and take a point, actually, there's no reason why we can't go to Bristol City and win, really, because they're they're terrible this year. Um, but-, but ultimately, you know, we, we're in a position whereby... The next five games, we can we can redefine our season again. But the the worrying thing at the moment, we're not scoring enough goals, and the performances aren't there. But if you spin it a little bit and you look at the the, pre- the Preston goal, how important could that let that that let ninety whatever minutes equaliser be at the end of the season? If we get in the playoffs by one point, or if we got promoted by one point, you could look straight at that game and say, right, that's where it, you know that game there. However crap we were, we came away with a point from it. Is it not? I'm sure I heard the stat the other day that we've we've had 14 points from goals scored in the last five minutes of the football game this season. 
14 points from, from the last minute goals, which I think is brilliant. And anybody that's leaving the seat and going home before the end of the whistle must be chuffing mad this season. It must be absolutely crazy. There were loads that went at Preston. Loads of people had gone. Absolutely. absolutely. Like, and it goes down. Uh, harking back to the Wolves game, of course, one thing that I utterly, utterly didn't understand was the booing at the end of the game. I know it was a terrible f- performance, I know it was a cold <laughs> night, but it, we'd not lost 6-0, so there's no need for that, I don't no. think. Bloody hell, 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 bloody I hate to tell you the last person I was, I booed. It was me. Chris Morris. Nope. It was somebody much better than that. You'll you'll really hate me for it. Were it Paolo Di Canio? No, it was John Sheridan. Oh, you tell. Oh, uh, that that night, yeah, I was one that booed it, and and I felt so, and when he had a go it was in the paper, I felt so bad after it, and I'm I've so never I have never booed a Wednesday player since. <laughs> I, I might have told just, I might have told him to get a finger out of her ass and stop being shit, but I've never booed him. <laughs> so, so so because John Sheridan tells you off, that stopped you doing a thing. <laughs> I felt like a naughty schoolboy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think sort of summing up the, um, maybe the Wednesday fans' mentality so far this season, we did put a couple of tweets out from the TWW cast um, accounts over there on Twitter. One was Kieran Westwood's amazing one on one save with the Wolves game, and one was the Sammy Hutchinson tackle. Would you guys like to uh, hazard a guess on uh, which one got the most retweets and likes over there on Twitter? Sammy, 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 By a chuffing mile. Kieran Westwood's wonderful save had four retweets and 43 likes. Sammy's almost death-defying tackle where he chops someone's legs off, um, 78 retweets and 103 likes. So, yes, apparently we're a bloodthirsty Bob, ladies and gents, which is... uh, very interesting indeed. <laughs> Everybody loves a crunching tackle. I love watching. I love watching my kids on a su- su- Sunday play. And Reese is is particularly good at a crunching tackle, and I love it when he goes in on somebody and proper, you know, does him. <laughs> and what happens if somebody did your Reese? Well, <laughs> Reese would probably get up and do him back. Probably doing Reese. You know? <laughs> Responsible parenting, right there. <laughs> oh, you just gotta love it. Uh, don't you love a crunching tackle though? You know, while, oh, while we're on crunching tackles, I was going to save this for my... Um, for Honestly, my, my, my knob gag on is going stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, You're I'll crunching tackles. Really well. really well. <laughs> uh, uh. While we're on this um, this subject then, you've put me right off my stride there, Fudge. Um, I was, I was going to save this for later <laughs> on, but I'll, I'll mention it now. So, you know, Tim Tim Robinson, who's the uh, the ref that sent off uh, Forestier area at Hull last season and Absolutely. then uh, also had the, the nightmare of the game against uh, Rotherham a few weeks ago at, uh, at Hillsborough. Um, he surpassed himself this weekend when he was refereeing Luton against someone or other. Um, and the w- one of the Luton players went in. It was a 50-50 challenge. Uh, and the the Luton player on the floor punched the the pitch and the referee went over and booked him and it turned out that he'd actually broken his leg in the tackle hence why he'd punched the pitch Um, and uh, (laughs) Tim Robinson uh, booked him for it he's he's good isn't he he? wasn't he Baldrick yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think there was a really interesting, uh, really interesting interview today on Talksport with the uh, with the former head of the referees association, and uh, and he says that the standard of referee in the last couple of years has dropped significantly, and uh, this is down to the fact that there aren't enough professional referees on the books anymore. So, for example, I can't remember the damn the damn bloke's name. I think it's not Halsey. It's um, somebody else before. Um, it, it was around in 99 and 2000 when they got full-time professional referees in. And um, and he said that uh, on his books in the Premier League alone, he used to have 17 referees of his, you know, the mainstay people, the ones he'd call on all the time. Uh, but now there's only about seven. And um, because of the way the fixtures fall. And fatigue will set in and hence them making well crap decisions do you know what I mean so uh, apparently it's not the referee's fault it's because they got to work loads blame Sky we can always blame Sky when it comes to fixture lists yeah it's it's uh, <laughs> overlord Sky and their uh, and their wicked ways here's a question where would you find all of the following in one place chairs tables beer Vic James more beer Dick Yow Eddie more beer and the rest of the Wednesday week gang That's right, it's the Riverside Cafe's new outside bar. All of your favourite lagers, ciders, soft drinks and hand pump ales are now available outside. Come and see the gang and give it a try. 
Riverside Cafe's new outside bar. Now open on match days. Um, right then, ladies and gentlemen. So let's move on to this week's Wednesday news, shall we? Um, there's not been a huge amount, but first things first. Transfer window is uh, open. With uh, we're in there, and Mr. McManaman is now with us. If anybody else tweets that to me, I'm going to scream. Um, and uh, we, we can't really argue with this one, can we? Did we actually speak about this last week? I can't remember. I'm sure I remember having this conversation last week. We didn't. We did not. Are you sure? Yep. Did we not say something about how nice it was that we'd been in the transfer window before it opened and got something sorted and we were very happy about it because normally we'd wait until the end of the transfer window? Uh, I'm, um, I'm unaware well, of this whole, whole thing. I, 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 was, I was being sick in the bath. I don't know. I wasn't here. Yeah, well, yeah. That's James, James is having a, a bath in his own sick. <laughs> He was just uh, rubbing it into himself. Yeah, he's like that. He's like that. <laughs> but no, it's good to see. My a cracking player, and I'm really, really glad that we, we we're actually getting quality into the club as well, aren't we? He didn't do a lot yes. on Monday, did he? Though, if we're honest, well, he, he, well, he, to he, be was, fair, he was a bit he... absent. But then everyone was a bit absent on uh, on Monday, and I'm guessing I know he's been training with us, hasn't he, for um, for a couple of weeks now? But th- there's only actually playing football matches that gets you match fit, so. Um, you know, I feel I feel a little um, a little bad, kind of bringing that up. Of course, the rumours <laughs> are abounding of other various whispers. We certainly no. didn't speak about Mister no, Fox no, no. last don't, week. Don't 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 do this. I know what you're going to do. Don't <laughs> yeah. do it. Don't do it. Don't we did we did speak about Fox Mulder and Morgan Freeman. Um, <laughs> we spoke about them. Uh, that seems to have gone very quiet, which makes me think it was utter bollocks. Um, you know, there's literally been nothing. I mean, straight up sod all about that entire thing. So uh, that's that's probably just you know, shit transfer. Um, <laughs> there was there was a great tweet from from some account or other, and you know, to give you an idea of how reliable this account is, um, it's got fifteen followers. Um, but um, I, I choose to believe this one's true, which is that we're in for uh, Lyndon Gooch from Sunderland, <laughs> which I like, just because quite quite like um, quite like a bit of Gooch. <laughs> <laughs> Make an interesting chant on the uh, on the terraces, that wouldn't it, <laughs> Mister Gooch? That'd be wonderful. Uh, but yes, other than that, it's just the, the usual nonsense. And there has been sort of the old bits and bobs about people going out. Uh, obviously, uh, again, we need to get rid of some of this dead world. Again, we mentioned it briefly last week, but it needs to happen so we can free up some some wages to get these people in. Um, right, other Wednesday news for this week. Player of the month was no surprise, was it, chaps? We spoke about it last week. The only person that could have possibly come anywhere near Hutch, in our opinion, would have been uh, Mr. Westwood, but it, it was a one-horse race, wasn't it? it I mean, it, it's... Um... Yeah, I mean, it, it must have. It'd be interesting to see what kind of the percentages were because it must have been like an absolute landslide that because I think he had an amazing month and um, there's not been really any point during any game where he's not been phenomenal. So um, yeah, it was open and shut. In fact, they might as well have not run it to be honest. Saved everyone the effort of those couple of clicks that they had to do. <laughs> just just give it straight to him. Um, other little bit, there's an interesting thing in the paper, obviously, um, after the uh, the games uh, we've just come through, Carlos had a little um, a little moan, which is unusual for him, uh, in the in the press regarding the, the fixture list pile-up. And of course, every club has the same thing. And, and uh, obviously, this being his first couple of years in England, he's still getting used to that. It's, it's not something that's as normal uh, abroad, is it? Um, but really interestingly, Bannon came out in the star. Yeah. Uh, today as well and said uh, well quite simply ba- Bannon play. came out in the star you're going to have to be careful out. you're going to have to be careful with this sort of thing it, anyways uh, listen Bannon if you are listening Dempsey's got karaoke on on a Thursday or something <laughs> but is now an expert as we learned last week yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But yeah, Baron um, mentioned in the star um, that um, if you can't play twice in three days then you shouldn't be a footballer which was a very correct brave thing for him to come out and say because essentially there he's um, gone against the boss um, and maybe had a, a little bit of a dig at um, other players in the club but we can't argue with him can we he's, he's, he's absolutely bang on can I can I just interject here and I'm not playing devil's advocate at all since the age of about 28 years old uh, playing one game of football may, requires more, you know, more recovery than minor surgery. You know, I, you know, after after, after kicking a ball on a Sunday morning, and, it, and it's not just the running and the, and the exertion; it's the knocks and the niggles and the studs you get here, and the, and you know, one that falls in your toe, and, and and you know, and you don't 
really feel any better until like Wednesday afternoon. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> but, fudge, but, but, fudge, to, but to, in, sorry, in, I mean seriously, in the nicest way possible. I'm not saying yeah. that you know that you've not quite got the the physique of a professional <laughs> footballer, but I there is that. there is a difference between you and someone that that does it for a living and trains. Yeah, but I, I I believe that they're in a worse state. I think that they're in a worse state than me. I'm, you know, well fed and um, and that sort of thing. <laughs> But um, I, th I think that there is a that you know their bodies are are on the line a lot, and and they get kicked and and bit and punched and swiped and and you know and I mean look at Lee Peacock, his back's fucked. Do you know what I mean? Oh, so, here we go. Here hang we go. on, hang on. We made it forty minutes into the podcast. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Before it is <laughs> before the first peaks alarm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I'm off to see, I'm off to see Raider Johnson on uh, on Saturday. Oh, oh you uh, going? Oh, you <laughs> name dropping yeah. bastard. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to go up and and you know, I'm worried about him and his legs every day, every time I see him because they're now essentially made of glass because of the exertion they put their thing, their their bodies through. And and I think it does need to recuperate. And I think it does need to rest. And I appreciate that you know they're in better shape and they've got a lot more people around them that are going to help them recover with their oxygen tanks and cold baths and you know wheelie bins full of water or whatever the fuck you know they do nowadays. <laughs> do you know what I mean? And and, and I. I, I get that, but I, I feel that your older players do need a bit more time to recuperate. Because, you know, I go out for a couple of beers and I need three days off the source. Yeah, but, but what Ben actually said was, if if you can't play, then you shouldn't be a footballer. Again, you're well, not listen, a footballer. <laughs> who, who was, who was going to tell David Hurst at 28 years old, you can't play two games in three days, so <laughs> see you later? <laughs> Nobody was. Nobody was. Can, on this... Know. On this subject, have you have you seen a couple of people have, have tweeted that the um, the the fixtures for next Christmas, so the dates that games are going to be played around next Christmas? Have you seen this? I haven't. No, I have. right. They're, they're so, quite significant. Yeah. So um, next season there'll be games on December the sixteenth, December the twentieth, December the twenty third, December the twenty sixth, December the thirtieth, and January the first. Chuffer, what? Dog. Yeah, it's uh, it's six games say? in sixteen days. It's six games. It's a sixth of the season. What did they yeah. say? Well, I can't a remember sixth the of the season worked. in sixteen days. Yeah, yeah. That's, That's it, it. Is so, really, really Carlos, silly. just save save some of that burning, Carlos. You'll need it next December. <laughs> now, bugger it to Carlos. Listen, Dave Ponchan Siri, how much are you going to charge us for these games? Because <laughs> I tell you, <laughs> I'm going to need a bit of a bloody discount because. Uh, as you know, Christmas is when I get my time off, and uh, Christmas is an expensive time of the year. So, can we, um, you know, be a nice. six-game season ticket? It's, it's, yeah. uh, we'll, we'll have to come up with a better name than that, obviously. But it's not a bad idea, Fudgy. Do you know? No, what, I, I re I'm nothing if not eminent innovative. <laughs> I, I hate going in a match on, uh, on on New Year's Day when I'm absolutely wasted. It's just <laughs> New Year's Day is just a write-off for me. So it's going to be a hopefully a bit away game. If you can't drink three times in three days, you shouldn't be a football fan, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not saying I can't do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, but interesting, very, very interesting points. Um, right then, chaps, of course, it has been announced as well that the uh, the third kit competition is now up and running. I assume you gentlemen all have your crayons out. Obviously, we know uh, Fudge's colouring antics after last <laughs> after last week um, and his colouring book. Uh, so... I, I, <laughs> <laughs> How are you getting on with your third kit designs, Chaps? Uh, well, you know, I, I'm finding it very difficult to just draw that uh, grey one from the 80s. Um, and I, <laughs> and as far as we understanding, I don't think Finlux are on board. So uh, <laughs> I, I've, I've had to go right back to the drawing board, mate. Can, can I ask um, uh, a, a question of, of everyone? What's your opinion on pink? Uh, it yep. can get in the fucking sea. <laughs> I'm cool with pink. I, I think I think pink was uh, popular back in two thousand and one slash two, and uh, and then they got accosted by people who you know sell pegs at fun fairs if if you know what I mean, and then it and then it ruined it, and then we all had to stop wearing pink because you know it just became too mainstream, what? and people who people who wear pink clearly just you know sit at home drinking cans of special brew watching uh, Mrs Brown's boys. What, I, I, what, what, you know, what, I've got lots of pink shirts, but I would never want well, Wednesday wearing a pink a shirt. Can you imagine the grief we'd get for it about what, being pink? What, what about if we call it coral? 
Oh, no, but it's all the difference. Right, okay. Listen, I, I'm designing a coral a kit. I've, I've never watched it. That reference is completely lost on me. That's a <laughs> reference. If, any, if anybody is out there that does watch Walking Dead, uh, Coral's a good gag there. Well, you know, <laughs> c- c- kudos to me. <laughs> Sorry, James, carry on. No, I'm 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 just busy designing my um my my coral coloured um, third shirt. <laughs> Basic chaps, we we are gentlemen of a certain age, aren't we? Yeah. And um, I have I have sons, and um, when my my middle son uh, was playing football, probably around about the age of um, twelve, thirteen, um, they had a choice of their kit, and the whole team chose pink, which I assumed was a generational gap. Now my um, grandmother uh, decided it'd be a wonderful idea for everybody that goes to watch that team to wear a pink scarf. So for an entire uh, three uh, seasons, I was forced into wearing a pink scarf listen, for football every Sunday. Listen, I, I have several pink shirts that I wear for work and some polo shirts as well. If you'd have watched the video of me dancing the other night, I had a pink shirt on. Um, so <laughs> I, I, you, you're just digging so, yourself old now, Mr. Davis. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not in that, obviously not in that same generational gap as uh, as you're in, uh, uh, my lord. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> More eccentric, and he wore stuff like that. What do you call that lord down at um, uh, Longley? He, he wears all wacky stuff, doesn't he? He'd wear pink. So yeah, he's, don't, don't... He, he's been drummed out the lord in society for it as well. Uh, so he's just not on. Now, personally, I've got a, a <laughs> the lovely... lording society. <laughs> <laughs> that was quick. That I enjoyed that. That was fun. Uh, that's a fun thing to say. I don't, know, I don't know what you mean. I don't know what you mean. It's a perfectly legitimate society. Um, <laughs> now, of course, being the, uh, the the fashionable gent I am, I've clearly designed a shirt with uh, lovely little epaulets on the side as well. And, and I, I thought we'd have a bit of a change on some tailcoats on there as well. It's very, very stylish, chap. So clearly. <laughs> with some tailcoats, just in case they need to do a Gary Lineker. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I, I'm just going to re- resubmit the kit from 1995, the home kit that seems to divide the, the world, just divide all, all Sheffield went. I'm going to just resubmit that, see if I can bring it back. I hope Sanderson are on board because it fit really well with it. <laughs> it's interesting, though, because I, I think, obviously, we, we're not going to see a stripy home kit, are we? I, I think, personally, I think this season has been setting us up for... It's the season doesn't like stripes. Exactly. Who, Hoop. And I think this has been setting us up for a, a blue body with white sleeves, which is yes. is, is, is what we might see. Um, the traditional Sheffield Wednesday second kit, I would imagine, would be yellow, do you think, chaps? We yellow alternate sky blue between, yep. yeah, yellow and, ten, yellow and black, we tend to alternate between, don't we? That, that, that 1991 kit, the yellow yellow shirt with, with sky blue socks and shorts. Oh, like the Brazil, the Brazil Favourite one. away kit. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. My favourite one of all time. So, clearly, then the only really option we can go, as Fudge said, is either the beautiful silver purple stripes or green and white hoops. Green, no. green and white hoops! Green and white hoops. <laughs> <laughs> what, yes. what about... I, I love that kit, actually. It'd be great just to be able to actually buy it and, and own it. What, what about if we do something along more of, like, a, a religious theme? Uh, maybe Ooh. we could ask Jeremy Halan to design it for us <laughs> and go whatever he comes up with. I think I think there's there's quite a lot of religious references on the uh, on the terraces just recently, like "Oh my chuffing God" and things like that. So <laughs> I think it did. Around us, yeah. I think it's slotting quite well. Uh, but no, there's been some some cracking. Some of the uh, youngsters uh, amongst the Wednesday fraternity, uh, their parents have been tweeting their uh, goals on Twitter as well. And of course, if either yourself or your young little Al would like to have a crack at that, the, the club have now put their PDF you can download on the website now as well. And do stick them out on Twitter, show us. And uh, I, I must admit, I'm really quite excited to see them. Um, right, other little bit of Wednesday news for this week. Um, our... First wild video editor, Mr. Richard Tittenton, did a fantastical video of the uh, highlights of 2016. If you haven't yet seen this, ladies, please do go and sort it out. It has hit over um, 25,000 views over there on the Facebooks. It is on our YouTube page. It did have a bit of a trouble showing on Twitter, right, which was strange. So uh, we'll try and get that retweeted. But please, 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 please do go and have a look at that because it just shows what a wonderful, wonderful year this has been for the house. 
It is and, and, just and, and what a good, brilliant. What a good job he's what a good job he's made of it as well. Anybody he could do that for a, a living, couldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> It's. Uh, I think all of us probably had like a, a bit of a. We might not admit it, but we had a bit of a tear in our eye watching it because it is. I mean, it's it, it's proper emotion, isn't it? It really does pull on the old heartstrings. It is brilliant, brilliant, and a superb job. Well done, Rich. Absolutely, absolutely. Whether you're celebrating a birthday, a wedding, or anniversary, maybe you've passed your driving test or you've landed a new job. Well, whatever your reason for a party, the Riverside Cafe is the perfect location on Catch Bar Lane overlooking Hillsborough Stadium. To inquire about hiring us for your function, call 07989 856 054 or Audible 14 232 6121. Um, right then, ladies and gents, so let's crack on. Uh, next thing on the agenda is, of course, uh, the Middlesbrough game. Now, James, you mentioned earlier that you're not terribly excited. Couldn't give a uh, stuff. Don't care. <laughs> I uh, would be more than happy to see us play not even a second string because one of them might get injured. So um, let's just bang out. Let's let's just bang out the kids. Let the kids play. I could not be less interested in the FA Cup. I do not care. It doesn't matter this season one bit. And actually, the the worst possible thing that could happen on Sunday is that we draw the game. And I would, people can crucify me for it, I would rather us lose than draw. And in actual fact, I don't really want us to win either. I, ju- I don't care. Don't care. That's all I've got to say. I just couldn't <laughs> give uh, a, 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 nothing. Nothing. That is how I feel about this game. And it's middle school. What a crap draw as well. I, I feel like I've wasted too much oxygen telling you how little I care about it. That is how little I care about it. <laughs> Me thinks right, you calm down. down. <laughs> Come on down. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you made yourself clear there, James. Don't um... care. I don't care. I do not care. Don't care. Do you, know, do you know what that reminded me of? If anybody's heard Alan Partridge's first book on audiobook, I Partridge, <laughs> and he goes, you think, you think I'd be annoyed at people repeating my catchphrase to me? No, I'm not bothered. In fact, I <laughs> couldn't give a fucking shit. Do you know what I mean? It, it, just, it just reminds me of that. Like, you know, you protested too much there, James. I think you secretly want to win the <laughs> FA Cup. I, you know, I think that you're, you, this is all just a small screen. When when we won this game, I'm not rising to it. I'm not rising to it. <laughs> when we've won this game and the next four rounds as well, and uh, we're off to Wembley to to play in the FA Cup final, do you think we'll have? <laughs> do you think we'll have the same attitude from Mr. No, James? James so, is going to sit there in his chair in his kitchen with his brew. Yeah, I will. You know. I will do. I will do. Yeah, because and, and because next, we're, next... when we've when we dropped to ninth in the table because of it, then um, you'll yeah. you'll all realise how stupid you are for giving a chuff <laughs> about the FA bloody cup. <laughs> If, it, if next round we get Chelsea at Hillsborough, you're good, though, won't you? If what, sorry? Chelsea in, in the next round at Hillsborough, you're good, though, won't you? Nah. Nah. I, you see, I, I, I've got I a really comfy chair in the kitchen. It's really comfy, this chair. <laughs> like, actually, let, let's talk about this, because we, we've touched on it before in the past. Because people always go, God, blue, we've got bloody Shrewsbury at bloody cup. Now, all right, yeah, Shrewsbury's a bad example because we lost. But, you know, wouldn't you rather have somebody who's perception is that they're worse than us rather than one of the big games because you know drawing the big teams is essentially just because we like the windfall for the money for example if you draw arsenal it's 1.2 million you get from gate receipts if you draw manchester united it's a million pounds we don't need that money anymore we're minted nope. do you know what i mean Absolutely. so i would rather draw port vale or bloody brentford no in fact now brentford are all right now aren't they now they sure you know rochdale like you know what i mean i'd, I'd rather have them <laughs> Than, than the big team so we can get a decent run going. But, however, when you're having a season like we are, when we need to kick in, I don't want a cup run. And I don't certainly don't want to put players like Forestieri in the shop window, neither. It, we wouldn't need to, though, do we? One of the things that we've mentioned, we have a lot of players at Sheffield Wednesday at the moment. We saw some of them on the bench the other day that we'd not seen for quite some uh, some time. Your, your papi chugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugugug
let's get McGoogle on the pitch. We'll give him a number just for this one game. Chuck him on. It'd be funny hey, to see what happens. Hey, it could happen. <laughs> we'll give him a number. We'll give him a number. <laughs> but I, I love the cup. I, I love it. I'm, I'm an old fashioned grumpy old sod and I, I love the magic oh. of the FA Cup as long as it's not us that's been the team that's getting whooped by some non nonsense team uh, then I'm, I'm more than happy with the Cup and I'd like to see us do a lovely little run I, I, I remember um, having wonderful Cup runs previously and I'd like to do one now I think that's, that's really sweet but you're wrong because it's crap <laughs> I think this is the most divisive podcast we've ever done, isn't it? You know what I mean? We don't agree on every point. This is this is this is lovely, right? This is, this is lovely stuff. This is you know this is a grumpy old James let's, podcast. Let's be fair, Lord Hillsborough. There's one reason why you're excited about Sunday, and that's because there's a very good chance that we will see on the pitch a certain striker who may or may not Jordan be the, the the son of uh, an ex oh, okay, prolific Sheffield Wednesday um, striker. <laughs> Um, <laughs> who, who? It would be a perfect game for us to uh, to give a start to, and for him to show his as what he can do. That's the reason you're excited about it, isn't it? I tell you really what, is. we can't we can't move on from this, can we? Right. So, listen. On the back of you know any Wednesday news, now the star, to, you know, sometimes are the gift that just keeps on giving. I think they're amazing. So you click the uh, football Sheffield Wed stat that gets up my ass already. This is Sheffield Wednesday news. <laughs> are you ready? This, this is. This is news for Sheffield Wednesday, this. Middlesbrough have bought Rudy Gestead. <laughs> oh, all right. B brilliant. Thanks. Um, <laughs> pff, uh, tenuous at the most. Uh, you know, all right, yeah, we're playing them on Saturday. I get that. All right, yeah, that's, that's tenuous. But then they finish the, the article off with, meanwhile, exile striker Luke Varney has penned an 18-month contract with Burton <laughs> Albion. <laughs> <laughs> It's oh, interesting right. to know, Fudgy. It's interesting <laughs> to know. I mean, obviously, that the, the Gusted news does mean that Middlesbrough have another striker in their ranks. So you'd imagine that they'd be trying to get rid of a few strikers that they already right. have, wouldn't you? Right, I'm going well, to breach this now. Gonna go in. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to breach the, I'm going to breach don't this do subject. It, right. Don't do it. Don't do it. I'm going I'm going to do don't it do because it. I'm, oh, I'm God, what, gonna gonna what, what, ne no. what needs to happen is we need to uh, shine a light on this <laughs> on this nonsense. You know, sometimes when you you know people seem to forget. Uh, that when it's written down, it's not always true. You know what I mean? So, for example, oh. we, we've got on Twitter. One of my, you know, a, a, a gift that keeps on giving. I am going to beat that out. More than the star. Right, so nine hours ago, breaking SWFC fans, it's that guy again. Exclusive Sheffield Wednesday is set to announce the season-long loan of uh, James Rond. Uh, and then, yeah. <laughs> The South Yorkshire club have beat off competition from elsewhere to secure his signature. Wednesday have agreed a two million loan fee with a possibility of signing roads for a fee of 10 million at the end of the season. Hashtag SWFC, hashtag Borough. And this one has been supplemented, which, you know, makes it bollocks. Um, Jordan Rhodes and Ben Marshall celebrating together. He's not played for them in a year. You know what I mean? But no, let's, let's get that one in. And then here's another picture of him in a Blackburn kit. Be prepared for news within the next few days, Wednesday fans. Well, hang on a minute. You've just told us it, it's already a done bloody deal. Listen, this bloke is winding you up and he is sat <laughs> on, laughing his absolute tits off. I mean, seriously laughing. <laughs> you know what I mean? This one here. Sheffield Wednesday are 5-2 to two on both Skybet and Bet Victor to sign Rhodes. They were 3-1 to one or 5-1. to one. Just an hour ago, yes, because you, you dickhead, are putting, you know, <laughs> you're telling people to put money on it, and it's gone down half, half, half a one, one half of a a, a one there. You know what I mean? <laughs> come on, come on, you people. Sounds Stop like he's winding, he's winding you up, Fudge. He's winding every bugger up. <laughs> people are buying it. And then this one here, this one's my favourite. This one's my favourite. What number will Jordan Rhodes wear at Sheffield Wednesday? That was, a, that was the best one to poll, wasn't it? Yeah. Is it? Is it either? <laughs> Number 48 or number 95? Because, you know, he's in the know. He's in... <laughs> he's, they're they're he's the buses that are local to him. That's all it is. <laughs> oh. And then, and then yeah, this one. This one, this one, the coup de grace. If Sheffield Wednesday don't sign Jordan Rhodes this window, I would close my account. It's happening. This is the fifth transfer window he's had you all by the, by, by, on the end of the hook. It's the fifth one. Come on, the gag's, the gag's gone. You know what I mean? Did you not learn with Ben Marshall, you people? What's the matter with you? Just block him. Just block him. He's like those blokes on South Park that sit behind the computer, just, just you know, just trolling away, going. <laughs> 
That's oh, oh, can, you people. Can can I add to that a little, um, and and just make the point, which is that anyone that actually gets any you know insider information that genuinely gets like in the know information, and you know, I mean, you know, we we hear bits and bobs from people, don't we? You know, but. You, you don't put it on Twitter because when you put it on Twitter, the people that have told you that information stop telling you information because you put it <laughs> on Twitter. So anyone so that goes on Twitter saying, years. guess what I've heard, they've not heard anything because no one will tell them anything because they put it on Twitter. So if you see it on Twitter, it's not true. <laughs> my favourite my favorite one is when they go, I'm hearing reports of... like, No, the only thing you're you're hearing is... Other people spouting bollocks on Twitter. Do you know what I mean? You're not you're not hearing fuck all. You know what I mean? People aren't ringing up going like 1920s Tom Wait people going. Oh hey, have you heard this on the news? This, 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 this is a hell of a deal. I'm telling you. You better you better get this down. You guys are gonna we're gonna go sky high. We're gonna get the Pulitzer Prize on this one. <laughs> <laughs> Well, unfortunately, I can't see any of that nonsense because I take so much Mickey out of those sorts of people. I have now been blocked by them all, um, oh. so um, which is a terrible crying shame. Um, right then, ladies and gents, that's going to bring us to an end of this week's show. Fudgy, if people want to find you getting rather cross with the transfer type people, where can we do that? I'll be. You can you can just see me just screaming at computer screens across <laughs> the uh, you know. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh, by the way, just uh, in other news, I've just got a load of grief from Martin Lewis. Um, you know Martin Lewis from MoneySavingExpert.com? Hmm. Um, oh, I... yeah. So he did a QA and a earlier on. Uh, so he wrote, Dan Fudge, I don't mind a question, Dan, though I'm afraid I couldn't name any Little Mix member. But that last... <laughs> that last... <laughs> That last comment is out of order. I'm not doing a celeb q and I'm answering people's questions about saving money, for which I get huge demand. Uh, I'm pretty sure the last comment was, how do you keep Mildew off a white shower curtain? But, you know, if, if you need me, there I am. Uh, you're going to have a lovely time. And I'm on Twitter, at Dan Fudge. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Fudge OB. Um, Mr. Marriott, if people want to ask you your views on the FA Cup, where can we do that? Uh, well, strangely enough, I'm not going to be at Middlesbrough on um, Sunday. I <laughs> don't, don't feel particularly yeah. motivated to go to the game due to the fact that the FA Cup means nothing. So, um, yeah, get me on Twitter at James Marriott. And Mr. Davies, if people do want to catch up on your wonderful moves over there on the Twitter Ridge, where can we do that, Obi? You can find me at Dickie L. Well, obviously, you can find my dance moves that Vic posted, and uh, I'll mainly be retweeting lots of uh, Jordan Rose posts now. It's just a, just a bug for fudge. <laughs> <laughs> of course, you can get all of me over there on the Twitter Ridge at Lord H. That's L zero R D underscore H. You can get all of the podcast at T W W Cast. And again, ladies and gents, we shall be popping out some T W W. Rewind videos as well. We've got some corkers uh, lined up for the Borough game, um, including some from previous FA Cup fixtures as well. Sorry, yeah, James. Worth uh, it. <laughs> um, and of course, you can find us on Facebook, on the YouTubes, and in all the usual places as well. It's been a pleasure, as always, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us. Be good, be safe, and we shall see you real soon. Chance here.